Hello, my friends. I am excited to talk to you about dandelions today, but first a question. Are you in the mindset that dandelions are a nuisance to your lush green grass and that they are weeds that should be sprayed and killed? If so, you are not alone in this modern belief and I too have felt that most of my life. However, my journey in learning more about medicinal herbs and plants has led me to discover what a mighty force for good this hardy plant is and I've taken it upon myself to experiment and to come to know the dandelion deeply well. So today I want to walk you through how I made this dandelion salve that could rightfully be called nature's neosporin. Now this is a great beginner herbalist creation and I'm excited to have you join me and learn more about the dandelion together. If you are new here, I'm Cami, creator of the blog Tidbits at tidbits camicom So let's first jump right into making this salve and then I will go over quickly about the benefits of the mighty dandelion and how to use this salve. So making this healing dandelion salve happens in three steps. One, gather the dandelion buds. Two, make an oil infusion. And then three, you'll make the salve. So let's, let's first talk about gathering the dandelions. Now of most importance is that you gather dandelion buds where you know for certain that zero chemicals have been sprayed. Now this is the case I would say for all herbs and medicinal plants that you plan to use topically or internally. So avoid like roadside areas or parks just where you can't be certain. We actually have a plethora, plethora of dandelions on our property where we haven't been able to get any landscaping done so far. So it is very wild and free and great for growing dandelions effortlessly. <laughs> now, if you simply can't find a safe place to gather or maybe we're off season, I will go ahead and link in my description a few places that I feel good about buying organic herbs and plants. I'll briefly say here that every part of the dandelion is full of benefits, namely the buds, the leaves, and especially the roots. But for this salve, you only need to have the beautiful yellow buds. Um, in the spring, I gathered a basket full with my kiddos and we gathered the leaves and I dried them. Um, I'm waiting until fall to harvest the roots since I keep reading that that is when they are the most medicinal. So once you have gathered your dandelion buds, now it's time to make an herbal infusion and this process takes a bit of patience. So step one for your infusion is to dry your dandelions. This process works for most herbal infusions, by the way, no matter what herb you're using. So if it's a nice warm day, you can place them outside to dry in a basket or like a tray of sorts that allows for airflow on the top and bottom. Now I invested in a layered hanging basket so I can do lots of herbs at a time. However, when I picked my dandelions in the spring, it was still pretty cold and wet outside. So I actually ended up drying them in a food dehydrator on really low heat until they felt like completely dry. Now you don't want wet herbs for an oil infusion since um, the moisture can actually aid in bacterial growth. I've read that you can use wet or fresh herbs when making extractions with alcohol or vinegar, but with oils, dry herbs are best. All right, step two for making your herbal infusion. Once they are dry, you'll need to get like a super clean glass jar and a lid and place your dry dandelions in the jar with some headspace. You're gonna pour your oil of choice to completely submerge the dandelion buds. Now I use this almond oil because almond oil is generally less greasy and absorbs quickly. I've bought it in bulk in these gallon sized bottles since I intend to experiment with lots of other herbs. Um, you can use olive oil, fractionated coconut oil, avocado oil, whichever like non hydrogenated plant oil you prefer, or even a mix. They all have their own benefits and properties. So maybe you want to do some research on that. If you want to learn more about what oil will be best for you. Now step three, make a label for your infusion. Now I like to list what plant is in it, um, what date I started the infusion and what date I should be finishing infusing. 
I just tie a tag onto the jar since this won't actually be the finished product and the tag will just be thrown away. Okay, step four, put your infusion in a cool, dark place such as a cupboard. You'll want to keep infusing the oil for four to six weeks and every few days just go and gently shake the contents around. Now after patiently waiting for your infusion, you are ready to strain the oil. So step five um, is the straining process. Now I find it works best to place a glass bowl or jar underneath a fine mesh strainer and then place some cheesecloth over the strainer. Then I like to just pour the oil and the herbs into the cheesecloth and pull up the corners and squeeze every last bit of dandelion magic out of those herbs. It's messy, but it smells so good. <laughs> so now you have your infused oil and you can pour it into like a portable glass jar is easiest to work with or a measuring cup if you have one. Um, you could actually use this oil now for things like salad dressings or other soaps and body products. However, we are making a salve with this infused oil. So I'll show you the final process. By the way, there are also faster ways to infuse oils with heat, but I figured um, I could avoid that and it might turn out more beneficial in the long run. So I use the slow infusion process. All right, so back to making the salve. Some supplies you'll need. You will need a double boiler of sorts. Now, I don't have one, so I gathered what I had and that was a glass pie dish. A bowl would have been better. Um, and I put that over a boiling pot of water. The point is to just gently heat the oil and wax together, not putting it on direct heat. Um, you'll need some beeswax pellets and I recommend about one tablespoon of organic pellets to every cup of infused oil you have. So the more beeswax you add, the harder your finished product will be. I wanted this to have kind of the consistency of Neosporin, so this ratio worked great for that. Now you'll need clean jars to fill, to dump your finished salve in. I've seen folks use like small tin cans, but I prefer these pretty glass small jars. And I, I will link to all my sources in my blog post and video description for you if you need those. But anyway, you might also want to add an essential oil. So then you might need your essential oil of choice and a thermometer. I wanted to add some lavender to mine um, for just a small lavender scent and to reap the benefits of lavender. So step one for making your salve, you're gonna combine your beeswax pellets with your infused oil on your double boiler. You'll want to slowly melt the beeswax into the oil. Don't actually let this boil ever. Just keep stirring with a wooden spoon until all the wax is melted into the oil. Step two, you're going to pour all this into a pourable glass jar. That just makes the process easier. And then step three, add your essential oil if you're doing that. You need to make sure that the oil and the wax is cooled to at least 150 degrees before adding the essential oil. I added about 10 drops of oil to my um, infused oil, which was about a little over a cup in the end. So then you just mix all that together. Step four, you're going to pour your salve into your finished jars and then let it set. This may take several hours to fully set, but then you can label it and seal your jars. So I played around with just adding some green linen fabric squares to the jars, which I thought was just as cute as a dandelion, <laughs> but I found it also useful to add some parchment paper over the lids so that I could write the date right on there um, to know how old my salve was. It should last for at least a year. I also used an old fashioned label maker to just label each jar as nature's Neosporin. Now I will have a printable recipe on my blog, which I'll also link below. And this allows you to print um, the recipe and start making your own herbal remedy notebook so that you can always refer to, the, to what is in your products and then maybe go back and make your favorites again, much like a cookbook. Now finally, I'll leave you with some guidance on how you could use this salve and enjoy the benefits of dandelions. Real quick disclaimer, because I have to say this, none of my words have been approved by the FDA. Always do your own research when gathering and using medicinal and therapeutic herbs, for sure. Um, now, I have poured over countless books and blogs to learn more about dandelions myself. Dandelions are known for their anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. 
As I mentioned, each part has their own unique benefits and strengths um, when taken internally through like teas and tinctures. You can really support your liver and kidney functions. It's actually a mild diuretic, which can help with any water retention. Maybe you get a lot of premenstrual bloating, um, any inflammation, and it helps with digestion. So that's taken internally. But since we are using it here topically as a salve, I was really interested in knowing how it does to like help heal cuts and bruises and sores and scrapes. So you can try using it next time that you might have be reaching for Neosporin and use this instead and see how it helps. Now topically dandelion is even a pain reliever. Now I had really achy legs after traveling and I rubbed this salve over my legs and I was blown away by how much it helped. It, it was really quite impressive. Um, I've also heard it's good for arthritis. I've heard it's helpful for acne treatments, eczema, rashes, maybe some dry chapped skin. So I'm just thrilled to have this salve on hand so I can use it in those instances that I'm sure will come up and will need it. So I have really enjoyed taking you along my own personal journey of learning more about medicinal herbs. You might want to backtrack um, and watch my first video where I shared our growing apothecary cabinet and lots of resources that I've been learning from. Let me know if you enjoy this type of content and if you would like to see more of the beginner type herb creations that I am making as I am learning. I just enjoy taking you along for the ride. So thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to my newsletter and my channel so that I can send you more inspiration for the keeper of the home. Talk soon.